Hey, what's up? I'm Mike. And I'm Oscar. Who you may recognize from a little show called The Office, but he has a brand new show called Benched. It premiered last week on USA. Do you want to tell us about your character? What if I was this serious the whole time? Wait. You would have to call me Sir. Okay. Ask me again how... <laughs> Who's your character on the show, Sir? Sir. Sir. I play a lawyer. It's a comedy. Eliza Coop is the high-powered lawyer, and she has a fall from grace. It airs on Tuesdays on USA Network at 10.30 at night. We're going to be taking turns watching videos about the human body. And we only have 15 seconds to prove how much of that information that we actually retain. You ready for this? No. Well, then let's do it. First up, we're going to find out what's really going on when this happens. Oh, yeah. Pretty disgusting, that's good. hurt a lot. Behold, everything you've ever wanted to know about the fluid dynamics behind popping your joints. This comes to us from SciShow. When you stretch or bend a joint, those bones pull away from each other, and that causes the synovial membrane to stretch, which increases the amount of space inside it, in turn lowering the pressure. And when the pressure of a fluid drops, any gases trapped within it become less soluble. This means they form bubbles. So that pop you hear is actually the sound of a bubble forming. We're gonna put 15 seconds on the clock, right. and you tell me everything you remember from that video in three, two, oh, A, B, C, D, and go! Oh. You said three. Okay, um, here's what happens. First of all, none of our joints are held together by anything you would think. It's all magic and liquid. Okay, I think I think you're right. And mm. also Chernobyl fluid is in the middle of them and that's everything I got. Wow, you, that's nothing. Uh, You've actually given dangerous information to the kids. All right, Mr. High and Muddy Lawyer Man, are you hungry? Very much so. All right, but do you know why? Because you guys said I couldn't eat anything until I did this perfectly. This was posted back in May by BrainCraft, a PBS Digital Studios channel written and hosted by Vanessa Hill. When your body has a low battery and needs more energy, hormones come from your fat cells, certain organs, and the gastrointestinal tract to tell your brain it's time for a snack. And the hypothalamus picks up on these peripheral signals and a bunch of appetite-stimulating neurons travel out to tell other areas of your brain that you're really hungry. You have 15 seconds to tell me from everything what? you just learned from that video. Video. I reject the premise because this video was about food amnesia. That's how it started. And right there, it's off topic. It was just supposed to be about why I feel hungry. Yeah. Now, from what I gathered, um, you... How much time do you have? And there it goes. Uh, Already? 15 everything. seconds? That That's was 15 seconds? 15 seconds is just 15 I'm seconds. I'm just ramping up! <laughs> <laughs> now, you know when you're in an elevator with a lot of people and then mm -hmm. you go to fart and then uh, it's a lot louder than you think it's going to be? No. Yeah, me neither. Everybody dreads the silent but deadly fart, and it turns out there's actually a scientific reason why the quiet ones are stinkier. This gas is made of mostly nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide, all of which are odorless. The smelly portion accounts for around only 1% of most farts. In the absence of the other odorless gases, however, these farts are concentrated with smell and generally quiet because there is less volume. Why do my silent farts smell worse than my loud Biggie farts. So the loud biggie farts are sometimes just from swallowed air, like when you're chewing gum or eating or whatever. <sighs> Silent but deadly farts come from like the, this little like poop man who goes through your big intestine poop. and all the bacteria eats it and releases this like sulfur and the sulfur smell is what comes out. Oh, up. Ah, time's up. Done. No. Mm -hmm. Got it! Now it's your turn. Everybody knows that coffee makes you more alert, happier, better at life, but why? Caffeine works by blocking another chemical in your brain called adenosine from bonding to receptors on your neurons. Adenosine keeps many brain regions in check, including one called the reticular activating system, which basically amplifies brain activity. When adenosine is blocked, this region goes into overdrive, sending a wake-up call to the rest of your brain. Why is coffee so awesome? Oh, easy. It blocks the adenosine, and it, that's the thing that makes us uh, tired and sleepy and it says, you're not tired and sleepy. Bam, done, that's it. Got it. All right. What is that, we got eight seconds? You wanna keep going? No, I don't need to. Stop Ernest. All right, Ernesto, today's challenge comes to us from James Gibson. Can you find a video of somebody playing piano whilst juggling? Whilst I appreciate your use of the Queen's English, prepare thyself for burnage. Dan Menendez is known as the world's fastest piano juggler and he uploaded this performance of Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody back in 2011. <laughs> James, my boy, to you I say away, you moldy rogue, away. If you think that you could bring down the king, go ahead and drop your challenge in the comments with the hashtag Stump Ernest. You know, I'm really glad that we watched those videos. I feel yeah. a lot smarter now. It's like the knowledge is like burning and churning inside of my brain. You didn't retain anything at all, did you? Not, um, not even a little bit. Either. Now play us out, Kid, Kid Inc. Inc. It's not a lot that Uh, what?
Fall. 